General Jedi Finn. Not yet, but could be. Could be. We're going to talk about that. We're going to uh, dive into Speculation Nation here, as we like to call it on TRB. Welcome, everybody, back to the podcast, the Resistance Broadcast, uh, the official Star Wars podcast of StarWarsNewsNet.com. I'm John. How's everybody doing out there? I see you. No, 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 not you. You. Yeah, you. Hey. Uh, we have a good show. Yeah, we're going to have a fun discussion later, speculating on um, the stuff John Boyega talked about. A little bit of an about face in, in a good way. So... Uh, Good stuff there. We're going to have a good time with that and uh, some other fun topics to talk about. But with me doing that, always James Lacey. Lacey, is that a a new Grogu shirt you're rocking today? No, I've had this for a long time. Uh, Can I see what is going on with that shirt? I just see his little face. It's just different faces. Different faces. Oh, 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 it's it's multiple Grogu's. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. So what's going on with you? Nothing. Excited to talk about Finn. I love John Boyega. Mm. Yes, um, the only one of TRB that knows what he smells like. <laughs> I would like to say the only one that's actually interviewed him and met him and had a conversation with him. But if you want to go with smells, that's cool too. You always bring that up as a joke. Don't try to make me look like the bad guy, James. What's going on, buddy? Um, nothing much. Um, I, I, we got a good topic and some good Will of the Force questions. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But we're doing uh, all Patreon this week, so all patrons. Yeah, submissions. so. Yeah, we we launched some new updates on uh, Tuesday on our Patreon page. So uh, our existing patrons, I know you've uh, probably been already uh, enjoying those. And we have uh, some cool stuff coming J- June 13th. We're doing a um, commentary on Patreon, but live for patrons to join us. We're going to be sending the link to you uh, in the base through the Patreon transmission right out to you so you can join us as we do that. A lot of other cool stuff. And, uh, of course, the new tier. So the Spice Runners. Hey. Uh, only only 12 slots. So get it while you can. That's all I'm going to say. But we're really excited about all those updates and, and to create all that different sort of content. Uh, updating new co- uh, old content, creating new content. We're very excited to do all that for you. And uh, this next segment that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be featuring more of you than usual as a thank you. So, James, what do we have going on? I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. Well, you know, if you like what we do here on TRB, please consider supporting the podcast and becoming a patron. Uh, We just made some new updates to the page, as John was mentioning, so it's time. It's a great time to sign up. Uh, Just head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast and take a look at the tiers. Pick one that works best for you and support us. Uh, We really appreciate all of the support. It keeps the show going and allows us to plan things for the future. If you are a $5 patron and up, you can submit questions and topics to be featured on the show, just like what we're getting ready to do here in Will of the Force. We've got four questions. I I said four and put up three. Isn't that funny? Four questions um, (laughs) coming from resistance officers. First one from General Frank Grande. Uh, Frank wanted to know, will we ever uh will they ever do a what if series for star wars like they're doing for marvel lacy i'm starting with you on this you think it's ever gonna happen hey frank um i do not think it's they will not i think marvel's on its own plan and they have all these different things that branch out from one cohesive map and i don't think star wars has that so i'm gonna say no (laughs) She's going no on this one. John, do you think we're ever going to see a what if series for Star Wars? Um, yeah, if they want to burn the franchise to the ground in terms of fans <laughs> online. Uh, so, so by that, I mean no, um, because it's just opening a Pandora's box of hell that uh, already exists when there's just normal canon. So uh I think that would just be a massive mistake, and I think Kathleen Kennedy's smart enough not to pull that trigger. Do you think mm-hmm. it's going to be a problem for Marvel? No, because no, Mar- Mar- comics are so like the thing about like comics in general is just like they've killed Superman six times. There's been twelve different of these. There's the multiverses and stuff. Like with with, with comics, you have way more flexibility, and I think there's less taken seriously. Where Star Wars is just like this is Star Wars, and that's it. Um, and I think people don't like to do game. yeah and people don't like to do the exploring of like oh that's not how i see this character yeah like like there'll never be a multiverse where there's like six luke skywalkers 
running around like Star Wars. Well, I get that. I'm just thinking yeah. off the top of my head, like one of the things in What If is that Captain America is actually going to be Peggy Carter. Mm -hmm. Like, could you imagine if they took Luke Skywalker and made it Leia Skywalker instead? I think people would lose it. Well, they, they suggested that in from a certain point of view, but... I yeah. just I think people would lose it. And I it, and I think yeah, a lot of fans yeah. would like it. I think we would. Mm -hmm. I just think that the negatives would outweigh the positives with people hmm. with Star Wars. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I think a, a little bit overstating. I think you you guys are with how much fans are there, how much backlash there would be on something like that. I still agree though that they're not ever going to do it. And I think the reason that they're not ever going to do it is because the what if series is a Marvel thing. It's not something mm -hmm. that they came up with for the show. Like, oh, mm -hmm. we had this idea. It's called what if, and it's for, we're going to do this thing. The what if series was a series of comics that already yep. existed in the Marvel universe, and they're just bringing that to life, just the same way as they've done all their stories. So, so to cross over, you know, into a different franchise, it would be like Star Wars is stealing Marvel's idea at that point. Um, it's not just like Will, a new thing that they're going to do. We're going to do a what if Marvel. Then we're going to do a what if Star Wars. Then we're going to do a what if Pixar, Disney? you know, or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. Um, so it, it is very, it always has been a very exclusive to Marvel thing. John, do you have something else to say? Well, I was going to say, James, I'll, I'll pitch a quick Will question to you. Will the song What If by the platinum selling rock band Creed be the soundtrack of the Marvel series What If. I thought it already was. I thought that oh, was announced. Okay. It is? I missed that. I missed yeah. that press release by Scott Stapp. All right. No. That is not true uh what I just said, but it makes me wonder what if. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what if? What if? All right. Patreon submission Commander Danny. This guy sold some records, James. So, yeah. hey. Um, Danny wanted to know, uh, will we ever get a trilogy series again? John, I'm starting with you on this one. What do you think? Trilogy series. So, so I think by that she means, uh, three movies, like a trilogy, a series of movies that are a trilogy. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, there, there's no question in my mind that they're going to come back and do an episodes 10, 11 and 12 and just like say it's separate. They're continuing the numbering, but it's separate from the Skywalker saga. They're going to do that. And it's going to be Ray. And uh, like we're going to talk about in a little bit, I think John Boyega is going to be a big part of that. And I have some thoughts on what how they can twist and turn some things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw up your guys' way. But uh, I think I think that's a lock. And I'm not saying it's going to happen in two years. I think they're going to wait till James Cameron puts out all 18 Avatar movies, and then they'll come back to take the spotlight. But... I think to me it's a lock because it's just <sighs> Star Wars is going to need to go back to that like root saga hmm. in a, in a in a loose way. Um Lacey, thoughts? Trilogy series? So it's kind of funny James that you brought up uh that what if would be them kind of jacking something from Marvel because mm -hmm. I kind of think that the Skywalker saga name came from Marvel. Like, I think Kevin Feige said, hey, these first movies and th this timeline is the Infinity Saga. Now we're going into something else. Like, he really put a kind of box around certain movies that that's what the story was being told. Now we're going in a different direction. So it's funny you said that because I was just like, oh, well, that's kind of tying into my second answer, which would be, <laughs> first of all, I think we will see another trilogy series, um, specifically a saga series. Uh, 10, 11, 12. I don't think they're done with Ray and John Boyega. Maybe Poe. We talked about it on Monday. Who knows? But definitely not Ray and, and, and John uh, and Finn. So I think that the Skywalker saga was them tying up those those ends with Luke Skywalker specifically and that family. And now that Ray has that name, it's a way to kind of put it back on those movies. Like, hey, remember this? But they can do a whole new saga with her and her own story. Hmm. Yeah, you know, um, total side note, I'm surprised it's not called the Skywalker Saga because that's how George always said it. <laughs> <laughs> he said saga. He always said things so weird. Yeah, he always had just a strange pronunciation. Maybe it's a, a, a trait to success, be known for weird quirks that people remember you or remember things about you. The Saga. Yeah, Saga. Um, Saga versus Nintendo. 
No. Um, What's George Lucas's favorite video game console? <laughs> Sega. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I th- I think I've stated this before. Like I th- I think uh, a trilogy, a series of movies, three of them, Star Wars, that's definitely happening again. I'm not a hundred percent sold that it's episodes ten, eleven, and twelve, but um, I wouldn't be surprised because c- again, it might not be a trilogy, but I think they could go down the route of just doing uh, Star Wars. Uh, Ray or whatever, you know, and like sure. have her do her own thing. That would be her returning, and they can go down that route. But I think when you look at all the places the Star Wars could explore, if they ever do like the old Republic stuff, or if they ever want to bring High Republic to live action or something, I think that that trilogy is always that classic, like boom, 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 um, setup. So I think Star Wars will do a trilogy again. Um, but I think you guys are both set that it's 10, 11, 12. I'm not sure about Lacey. Yeah, I think it's going to be 10, 11, 12. You They're going to tie 11, it back to it, but it's going to be its own thing. Yeah, that was like, the Skywalker Even though the saga. Marvel movies are outside of the Infinity Saga, I think mm-hmm. they're still within that timeline of, hey, the, these chunks fall into these different parts. Sure. Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, this one is coming from a resistance officer that is a general, and that's Jake Houchins. Hey, Jake. Jake wanted to know, uh, will they ever change anything in the sequels like they have with the original trilogy? So, for example, adding Hayden Christensen as a Force ghost, the end of Return of Jedi, something like that. Lacey, I'm going back to you. Do you think we're ever going to see changes like that? (laughs) Isn't the big drama that everybody had that they, like, removed some of the blue filter or something, (laughs) uploading them to Disney Plus? Oh, Um, yeah, recently. Did that that happen? Is that true? I don't know. I think they changed the filters a little bit and made them a little less blue, which, again, that's kind of... It's kind of scary. A little away from the question, it's kind of scary that they have the capability to do that. So, like, with the Mandalorian where they removed Gene's guy and they removed this and that, and, you know, there was a helicopter in the Boba Fett episode that they removed afterwards. It just makes me nervous because you're like... Because you're not, you don't have that media in your hand. It's like they always have the capability of either removing it or changing it. And that makes me so nervous. Um, That being said, will they ever make changes? (sighs) My heart wants to say no. Like, oh, they wouldn't do that. But I feel like they will. (laughs) That they'll change something to be like, oh, this is the new version with this in it. And it's just something they're capable of doing. John, do you think we're going to see changes like that? This just got a lot more valuable. <laughs> Did um, it? They haven't made I, changes. Oh, the, the you're filter. saying because of the filter? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, buy your physical media, folks. That's all I'm going to say. Um, James is stewing inside. Yeah, like inside I care about the blue filter. I'm glad they changed. No, it. I don't either. I I, it's, <laughs> I think that was an I think that was a, a an over. Uh, dramatic thing because there's a lot of scenes in that movie don't have any blue but um, i think every movie has a look and some people like it and some people don't yeah um i think they will yeah i don't see why not i mean it was uh th- they're still making changes to the other movies so um and i've i've been one who's been hoping that they make updates to some of the uh dated cg in the prequels um but um yeah i, I think there's going to be quirks or changes and stuff uh, i don't think it's gonna be anything massive in terms of changing content or story or anything like that but um if they see something they want to fix or, or or whatever that makes it better uh that isn't that big of a deal i i could see them doing that and i, I don't think it's a major issue really it's so weird that like the changes that george made in the special editions and stuff are so controversial um, but I think part of why they're controversial is because they're erasing the originals as what Lacey was saying is they're not being very, they're, they're saying we fixed it instead of we changed it. You know, we changed it implies now there's two versions, you know, like we, we think this is right. kind of our ideal. This is like more McClunky. of a, this is more of a director's cut. This is more of a special edition or something like that, but we still have this one. And I think the issue is when you take something that somebody enjoys a way to replace it with something else is when you have the issues. I don't know when that's going to become more clear. Maybe it's the Zack Snyder thing. They they are very f- forward about the the theatrical cut is the canon story. 
we also did this other cut and you can still purchase both. Um, so I don't, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, that yeah. starts to begin the precedent of like allowing people to get both versions. But, but I mean, that's been that's around forever thing. though. Like, I guess like Blade Runner, like director's cut, special edition, yeah, like, final like, cut. Star Wars can say like, yeah, this is our canon and stuff, but you could be like, nah, I'm good. True. But because like, like Matt Martin even said that he's like, people always ask me these canon questions. I'm like, if you have the original version of Star Wars on VHS and that's the one you watch, then that's what you watch. Like there's no like laws. Mm -hmm. Like, and I I think it's, that's people got to remind themselves of that. Like these are just movies and it's, it's okay. And like, yeah, George Lucas made changes to the original trilogy. And honestly, I think a lot of them were good changes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and and like the upgrades, they changed so many things. Like people focus on the Greedo shooting first and, you know, other things that uh, like the Hayden Christensen thing and they, they get mad about it. But like the Palpatine change is wonderful. But even just small little things like getting rid of the transparency in the cockpit of the snow speeder is a huge change and a good upgrade. And they went through every frame of those movies to make them more modern so that you could seamlessly watch your saga and not be like, Oh, those movies were made in this era, and then oh, but these ones were made that. So I, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a good thing, and I don't think they're going to go too crazy with it. I think the one person that would have gone crazy with it is George Lucas, but he's not. He didn't make these mm-hmm. movies, so I, I can't see, you know, J.J. Abrams going in there like, let me go back and carve up that movie, or let me, let me edit in Leia hugging Chewie because people were mad about that, or you know, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I think you know, especially you hear them in interviews. I think J.J. and Ryan are just like. I made my movies. I'm standing by them, and I respect them for that. I wonder, I wonder if, if Disney they wants would, to make a couple tweaks, and so be it. I wonder if they'd ever add a Ben Solo at the end of Rise of Skywalker. Nope. Force Ghost. I wonder. I wonder if they ever would. I feel like a lot of people had issues that he wasn't standing there, um, especially because he did go into the Force. So I wonder if they'd ever add that. I think it only if JJ has an issue with it. Right. I don't I agree think with it that. would be. I totally a, agree. I don't think it would be a fan response. JJ would would have to say, "I feel like I was backed into a corner and I couldn't make a decision." Now that I've spent a few years with it, there were some changes to the movie that I'd like to make, and I hope you can go on that journey with me. And that would be <laughs> one of the changes. Now I that change that because... too could be fan controlled. He could be doing right. that because he wants the fans, but it has to be JJ's decision. It, and I was going to say too, I wonder who makes the cut. Or who makes the decision that they're going to change like the color temperature and stuff too? Was that a JJ change? He was like, you know what? Can we fix it's this? It's really blue, yeah. Or do you think that's a producer? Because ultimately, the producers of the movie are the people who own the movies. I they like hire the JJ director, change. but it's the producer's movie. It's the studio's movie. It probably so, depends on the contract that they signed when they came on. That, like, you can't change saying. my movie. I'm or, just curious yeah. if this change did happen if it was something that JJ was involved with or not. Ben, so- ben Solo's on the precedent. couch with the uh, Beetlejuice waiting to get get, get in. <laughs> the <laughs> only the reason I say that is because they have added Hayden at the end of Return of the Jedi. So that could be an easy change that they could make. But it's another discussion. That wasn't, that wasn't just a, it was just Obi-Wan and Yoda. And they're like, let's put Anakin in. He was, Anakin was there. They're just like, we're going to do a different Anakin. Where this would be, we're adding a whole different person that wasn't there. Yeah. That's a different change. It, 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 I understand True, both sides. But... Yeah, it's a good discussion to have. Maybe we'll have it one I day. wouldn't hate it. Like, I, if I saw Adam Driver, like, hey, how are you doing? Um, <laughs> okay, fine. To, to be clear on the question and my stance on the question, I don't think they will. Not as of now. Um, but I think if we start seeing this more as a precedent that they're changing things in uh, a lot of these shows, including Marvel shows and other things like that, then and it starts randomly. to become more realistically. Re- more yeah, realistic it's, just, it's like secretly changing things that like people are like wait what the yeah didn't this what used I mean? to have it's like disney now owns the mandela effect <laughs> sinbad was in that genie movie yes, i'm telling the, you they're like they make it very clear that uh sinbad was in rise of skywalker they're like he always <laughs> was and everybody's like i don't remember this what <laughs> they're trying to make uh jack part of the ride you know and they're like you know, he's just part of the ride now. Like Isn't Jungle he? Cruise. The Rock was always on Jungle Cruise. Yes. 
Emily mm. Blunt was you know, has so always you know been a part of this ride. What's so funny? <laughs> she when, was does that, when does that come out? Does that come out this summer? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's coming out soon, and it's coming to Premiere Access. I don't know if anybody's going to. It's going to. It's going to make a billion dollars somehow. You With know the rock, what it is, Everything literally. that guy does, it's crazy. <laughs> I know, but it's literally like Pirates of the Caribbean, just in jungle. That's literally yeah, but what it just, is. Because it's Dwayne Johnson, it's going to make a lot of money. I know, but the special effects are like these half dead people covered in bees. They're just not covered in barnacles, but bees. Yeah. And you're like, okay, yeah. so it's like pirates. All right. And it's a yeah. ride movie. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Well, so there's half yeah. dead people and it's a ride and they're so the coming for you. The first one's going to be good and the next 12 are going to be horrible. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Somehow Johnny Depp shows up in the third one. You're like, what? <laughs> See, if they're just doing the rides, he's thing, back. Th- then <laughs> from the, the land of the canceled, he returns. The <laughs> next Johnny Depp. Obvious would be Haunted Mansion and here's my pitch a Guillermo del Toro he should uh no I'm How just I'm just dare you <laughs> I think uh I've been saying that for a long time now um I'm no sure anyway you have. that's a Lacey thing anyway uh we got one more question here Didn't they, they already made that movie with Eddie Murphy right yeah, yeah but Guillermo no. del Toro pitched like a new version yeah mm. I think the 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 Eddie Murphy one kind of just got passed over I think it was in, in an odd space and kind of ahead of its time where people are like, mm, about a ride, and then pirates came along and they're like, oh, we get the ride thing now. Haunted but Mansion, like, Haunted terrible. Mansion just I'm wasn't sorry. there yet. I know there's people out there that of, love um, it that are like, oh, it's like, you know, holiday special, it's campy but cute. And I'm like, no, it's bad. It's just really bad. I live tweeted it last year. If you're looking for a funny thread of me being like, what the hell's going on? Go read that. It's really I also watched it for the first time like the same day Lacey did that. <laughs> It must have just came on Disney Plus. It or did. Something. It did. It Man, was like their Halloween off. collection. Um, anyway, instead of making the movie, they should put the budget into the ride so it doesn't break down every time I go on it when I go to Disney. John, we've had this conversation. It doesn't break down. They have to stop the ride so people can get on. It broke down. Every time. <laughs> we literally had this conversation. They shut the lights off too. It's crazy. <sighs> Um, anyway. Our last one comes from our last uh, will the force question comes from uh, a general uh, general Hass actually what's up man um, the question uh, he wanted to know was will we ever see a future Jedi Council again with Ooh. Rey and or Grogu at the head of it um, man I can't remember who goes first I think uh, John on this one John what are your thoughts on future Jedi uh, Council I hope not I hope they. St- steer a new path uh obviously ray's still a jedi um and we're going to get into it in a minute what we think about uh what finn might be but i don't want them to just be like all right let's reestablish everything that they did in the prequels like i i would i think it'd be cool if jedi were just kind of their own walk their own path and like did their own thing without it being like oh now ray's gonna have her own academy and she's gonna be the teacher like that would be so lame in my opinion so i'd rather I'd rather her be like, yeah, I'm a Jedi, but I'm not, I'm not all about like teaching 500 people how to do what I do. So I, I wouldn't like that actually. But although we have said this on the podcast, I, I think we're going to see Grogu and Ray. He's going to be a, a big part of that because they know how marketable he is. He's definitely going to be involved in that uh, next hmm. trilogy or whatever. Lacey, are we seeing a Jedi Council again? I don't think we will. I think Ray's obviously going to be in charge in some way. Like she's either going to start something, whether it be an academy or a group or something. But I don't think she's going to be the head of something. Are you okay? He just, yeah, it's just because. I just said, I hope she doesn't start an academy or something. And then you're like, I think she's going to be the head of an academy. That's okay. Yeah. Part of the show is we disagree and agree on things. Um, I don't think she's going to be in a council though. I think we learned from the sequel trilogy that, she learned from Luke, basically, and everybody involved that councils are not the way to go. And I think especially from Luke, she learned that. Um, and then what happened with Anakin and then with Ben Solo, I just think that's not the way to go. But I think that just from what we've seen from, like, the Lego Christmas special where she's teaching Finn, clearly that's going to then get into a bigger situation where she's teaching other people or there's a group of people teaching each other. Because you can't just have two Jedi. I think they're going to have more. Um, well, yeah. Uh, we disagree. Because I definitely think they're going to do another Jedi Council. Um, yeah, I don't I don't, I don't, don't see why that's a bad thing at all. Uh, you, I don't it's think just, it's a bad thing. I just don't think they're going to do it. But it's that's an, cool. 
it's just an established order. Any type of established order is going to have people who are essentially in charge or leading it in mm-hmm. any sort of government or organized anything. Even if it's like a fan club, you're going to have a president of the fan club. So you're going to have something that is... <laughs> Raise a, the president of the Jedi fan club as a, a Jedi. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it works, like in right. life. Um, and I definitely think that... Uh, I, I have for a very long time said that I think the the Jedi way worked very well for a very long time. And it wasn't sure. until Palpatine came along that everything got misguided. And I mean, when I'm looking at the stuff that's happening, even in like the High Republic, they make it very clear that this system is 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 fine. You know, it, it, I, I think the council is not the problem. It just happened to be the circumstances of what was going on at the time and, and the war. And they were just kind of maybe like falling under a strange teaching. Issues. But yeah, but um, but no, I, I definitely think the council will happen. And I think like reinvigorating that idea with with a new maybe a new outlook to it. Um, but mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be like uh mutants and the new mutants or you know what i mean it's going to be like council <laughs> and then like they move on to like this is the new jedi order um and cool. how things are going to go yeah i definitely think so has so um i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you just wanted to know if we would do it but yeah ray grogu council i'm down all right john mm-hmm. let's get to it that's it for will of the force um let's get to that discussion about john boyega Right, yeah, our discussion this week, John Boyega as Jedi Finn in future Star Wars movies. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. Okay, so yeah, last week we talked about that brief video of John Boyega um, seemingly being asked whether um, he has warmed up to the idea of coming back to Star Wars. And he said he'd be open to returning and having that discussion for future movies if Kathleen Kennedy... JJ, maybe someone else, and just the old team was back, and for him, uh, it would be a no-brainer, were his words. So, um, a big turnaround since uh, just 10 months ago, where he said, uh, no, I'm all done, when someone said, uh, I want to see you with a lightsaber. So, uh, good news there. Now, The Rise of Skywalker did end with Finn as a general, but more importantly, Force-sensitive. Uh, a lot of people miss that somehow. But uh, the holiday special, while not canon and kind of campy, and it was obviously by Lego, did show Finn training with a lightsaber with Rey. And if Boyega returns, uh, to me, it seems likely we would see Finn as a trained force user of some kind. No guarantee to be a Jedi. But let's explore the possibilities. Let's have some fun, put our hats on here, and speculate a bit on what that could present from a story perspective Um, especially coming off that last question, you know, we have different thoughts on whether it'd be an organized Jedi thing, or they just kind of like try to change the path. Um, I I just, my, my, to kick it off, my, my thing is just, um, they're going to like, they'll have familiarity, familiarity because they'll still have the droids around and Chewie and the Falcon and, you know, the lightsabers and, and, and stuff from the sequel trilogy, you know, Ray Poe, Finn, whatever. And, um, I still think if they returned it, Poe dies early in the first one if, if Oscar Isaac hasn't changed his tune. But um, he may, because look what happened with Boyega. But uh, I, I think when you have that familiarity there, you can do fresh starts with the other stuff. And I, to, for me personally, it would be stale if they just do another council thing and try to repeat what was done by the Jedi of the prequel era, which uh, led to their demise. So... I, I think they, they would carve a different path. Uh, but in terms of Finn, I think it would be really cool to see him not necessarily maybe be a Jedi, but if they do do something where he follows that path and doesn't choose the Leia route where it's like, yeah, I have this, but I'm going to abandon it and go the government way or the the war way. I, I don't want him to be in training. I don't want to, to see him develop more because people are were hoping for that in this trilogy i think it's going to be he's going to be boom like right there with ray but not as strong as her but fully realized and whatever he's doing he's going to have those powers because i think you know a finn another finn like origin story would be uh kind of rough for a lot of people to handle i think they want to see him just kind of shot out of the canon and they could fill in with the books and comics on how he got there or an animated so- show i think we want to see finn doing his thing with a lightsaber. And I think that'd be really cool to see. And I think that conversation he had with Kathleen Kennedy last summer, they had that one-on-one. She's probably like, look, we have, we do have plans and we've been talking to Daisy. Like if you come back, Finn's going to be 
killing it. He's going to be a Jedi. And he's probably like, all right, okay. <laughs> and he'll be flipping over the couch again like he did the first time he saw that first trailer with him with the Boy. lightsaber. So, yeah, <laughs> right. So that's where I'm at. I, I don't know. I'll, whoever wants to pick up off that, I know we have different thoughts, I'm sure. Yeah, you go, Lacey. I want to hear what you... Because I, I know you're like big into him being a Jedi, right? Yeah, I mean... I feel like that's one of the bigger things I really wanted out of the sequel trilogy. I felt like it was like right there that they could have explored that storyline. And then we get the tease of it basically at the Rise of Skywalker. And you're like, wait, what? And then it ends. And you're like, but I have so many questions. And then we get the moment with Finn and Rey and that Lego movie. And you're like, I wish I got to see this like in live action and not via computer graphic Lego. But I, I agree with John. I think... If we see a future movie, which which I think we will, uh, and Ray and Finn are off on a mission to do something, I think he's already going to be trained. And you're going to see Ray with her lightsaber that you've already seen, and she'll be doing her thing, and then he'll come in and light his up, and he'll be good to go. I don't think you're going to see the training going on. I think it's going to be a good enough period of time that they're going to give some space between Rise of Skywalker and whatever this next movie is going to be. I think by giving more space, it lets for more more story to be told and more growth to happen that you don't have to see on screen. I think that was one of the biggest crutches of the sequel trilogy is that because the time was so close and with all the movies, you didn't get to see that progression in a way that was satisfying that you're like, oh, okay, they've had three years to figure this out. Like, I don't need to see that. I'm just assuming it's already done. Um... I don't know if he'll stay a general, only because I feel like if Poe sticks around in the next movie, he will be taking that role or someone else might step up as well. That could be an interesting thing with Poe kind of battling with someone else because he tends to do that with like everyone that's in power. Um, But I think it would be cooler to see uh, Finn and Rey out on adventures on their own trying to fix things or establish things or, you know like kind of with the Lego thing where she's going off to see what the ancient Jedi ways are. I, I could see them doing those kinds of things and going off on kind of like a Indiana Jones-ish figuring out the past, but it affects what's happening now type adventure would be cool. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it's so weird that to me, like I've always kind of lined up these characters with characters from the original trilogy. And you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, Oh, you know, Ray, she's obviously like the Luke character or whatever. And I kind of piece them together. And it is kind of strange to me how it would change Finn, like in his role, in his dynamic. Cause then you have like these two Jedis that, and then you have like someone who's not force sensitive, like with them in the group. Mm-hmm. And that would be Poe. And if you get rid of Poe, then you completely change like the dyna- the dynamic of there's this the big three, you know, and it's mm-hmm. always been like these three or whatever. I, I mean, I don't know, man. It, it kind of it's kind of a little weird to me. I know that the uh, prequels to me, the big three were uh, Obi Wan and Anakin, and they were always together. So it's like it's been done before. And Padme, you're saying? I know, and Padme as well. Yeah. Padme was the like non force sensitive character that was there, right. or whatever. Right. But I, I, I don't know something about the prequels. Even though those were the three, they that dynamic just felt different. I guess maybe I'm saying they could pull it off, but I can't picture in my head what it would be like to have sure. Ray and Finn clearly getting along and being and doing that thing. And then Poe being there as well. Like, and also Poe, he's there. So I'm trying to figure out what that means. And even, and if they get rid of him, then you break the dynamic of the trilo- uh, the trio. But it so could I'm, be Jana. Could be someone else. Yeah, it I, could. I mean, it's hard to think about it from like the idea that Oscar Isaac's going to come back full bore. But at the same time, I think a lot of us felt that way hearing Boyega last year. But yeah. I, so I, I'm just saying like, I can see Oscar now in his mentality. Now I can see Oscar coming back just because he respects and cares about um, Daisy and John and maybe have Poe be the thing that is the vehicle to introduce the new villain. And we always say, you know, in Star Wars, how do you live up to the legacy of a Darth Vader? You have you give your villain a big moment. And Kylo Ren's was killing Han Solo. I think our new villain killing Poe Dameron would be that for the next um trilogy if ray 
and Finn saw Poe get killed by this new, whatever the new mm-hmm. uh, antagonist or villain is. Hopefully no one related to somebody, you know, hope, like <laughs> I, I'm all about, let's try, let's try to do some different stuff here. But um, I think that would be something that could be kind of interesting and would work well because um, Oscar could come back, but not be vested for the whole thing. And it would be able to, you know, you don't have to write them off uh, between movies or anything like that. Um, and that could change. Maybe he hears what Boyega said and he's doing this Marvel thing and he's like, yeah, you know, I was kind of burnt back then, but um, I'm excited to work with blank, whoever the director is, you know, that sort of thing. I don't think that's going to be Ryan Johnson. I know people are in the comments are going to say Ryan Johnson would be doing that, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very curious. But, but the one thing that we have to you know keep in mind is <laughs> these are probably years and years out, right? Because mm-hmm. they want the break for one thing, and then two, uh, the like the all the like writing and all 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 that stuff would have to happen. And who knows if Kathleen Kennedy's going to want to be around that long. And who knows if J.J. Abrams would even be interested in coming back. And Boyega said he'd want both of them back. So it, there's a lot of like, a lot of things got to work out for all this to happen. But if we're going forward with the idea that he is coming back, I, I think Daisy Ridley could lure him back as long as like it's a good director and they get a good John or know. Oscar? Boyega, I think. Oh. Um, I yeah. think Boyega's in. I think he basically said he was in. If, but what, what do you feel about the, his like stipulations? In. Yeah. Well, so what if JJ was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all set. I think like, I got my Warner Brothers thing. I'm like over here now. Yeah. I, I, and I don't want to get as, too much into the is the force with you of JJ coming back specifically. But, yeah, we have that coming up later. Yeah. But I'm saying I think John's basically back if the right people are behind the project. I don't think it has to sure. be a JJ project. I think if he said, oh well, no, Kathy said. This yeah. director, who also is friends with JJ, is doing it. I think John would come back in a in a heartbeat if they he asked him say, to. Oh, yeah. He'd do it because he's a Star he's Wars a- fan. That's what you have to boil it down to. You have to remember that no matter what happened to him, he is yeah. a Star Wars fan, and he knows how important it is to have representation on screen and how much it means to fans and other actors that he's a main character on screen. And I think that's important. So that's why I think he would do it. Also, I just think he would love to be a Jedi. And I think that's why he was excited of what could be. And that's why he's like, yeah, "Yeah, sure, I'll consider it. Because they're like, I think all of us as Star Wars fans were like super pumped when he was basically saying he was force sensitive. I don't know about anybody. I was. And it was the moment in the movie that was the most interesting to me for The Rise of Skywalker. There were people saying they didn't think he was. There were people that were like, oh, it it was not that that specific. You said some people missed it. No, they missed it, but for people to deny it when it was realized is, I think, a different thing. Like, he clearly, he experienced Ray's death. Okay, like, hold on. I don't think Falcon. I'm saying they denied it necessarily. I'm saying that oh. they they didn't specifically say it, therefore people aren't 100% because people don't want to be wrong. They never said in the movie he's force sensitive. They I mean, hint they, at it. They, they allude it. to it. They punch you in the face with it. I know, but you could argue if he's not force sensitive, say the new movie comes out and he's not, That's, you could argue that he never said it. I guess, but like th- there's this new thing these days where everyone needs everything mapped spelled out for them like verbally. And uh, what what happened to like vo- like visual cues and like things like that? Like they clearly to me in several instances in that movie show that he's force sensitive. He even says like they're like how did you know? He goes it's just a feeling. And when she dies, he does the same thing Leia does when Han dies. He grabs the wall and he's like, oh, my God, Ray. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, it's it's clear as day, but I, I, I understand. You know. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think another confirmation for that, too, is also, and I know it's not canon, but the Lego thing, too, is like if the creators that are behind the, the force that is Star Wars didn't think that was a part of it than this the would, path yeah, yeah it would make right. no sense right. like it would they it, wouldn't have approved that yeah it would have been like watching the lego special and pose training with a lightsaber and you're like what is this like this doesn't like the mm-hmm. the hint or the the concept there is being proven um by the lego thing yeah. just in the sense that he was training with a lightsaber and it what and it shouldn't be like a big surprise to anybody um Sur- surface value question real quick what color lightsaber would you want finn to have blue i'm throwing yeah i'm thrown off because 
daisies, I think, should be green, but it's yellow. <laughs> and I don't know what yellow means. Um, I assume I assume uh, Finns would have to be blue because he is he's a knight. He's a defender. It's, I love that you go into that, James, of like what the colors mean, because I know that there's there's like stories and stuff behind that. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I'm just like, oh, she is yellow because it's cool. And that's the yellow one. Like Luke has green because it's cool and it's green. I so mean, like that's you know, why I immediately said blue because I was like, oh well, we've seen him with the blue one. He looked cool with yeah. blue, therefore blue. I I wanted to see green just because we haven't in a very long time. I agree, mm-hmm. but I think I, I would be very well, surprised. Well, we saw it in Last Jedi. Well, Who was sort green? of. Oh, for the two seconds when he almost killed Ben Solo. Ah, uh, yeah, that was. Yeah, that's. I want to see some green and and. Well, you and saw then it Rise of Skywalker, Skywalker them too. fighting. Yeah, yeah but I, I mean, in present time, like, correct, uh, someone using it. I, I would, I would just, I don't know what yellow means, but I feel like Finn's being green would mean that he's very like force, like present, you know. And I'm like, okay, so that means he's more force present than Ray, uh, maybe, possibly. But I feel like they both have the same traits as people and then all of a sudden she has a yellow one and I'm like okay so I don't know what that means exactly but but what if what if they throw the convention out the window on whatever they think and like the Jedi of that era thought that that was supposed to mean and like she has the ancient texts and what if they say something different than what they you know well, you don't they can just you don't choose your color no I know it bleeds and they're like you're <laughs> no, this color now that's not whatever. it but okay um but no, I, what is it? It's the, what is it? What, what's the, the actual crystal calls thing? to you? Yeah, it's just it's you ignite it, and when, when it's your thing, you, whatever you're giving off is is how it responds. It's like think like an aura thing. Mood like ring. if you're a Sagittarius or something like that, it's gonna be orange. But the thing, but it's just in reality, it is based on how they're just picking different colors and stuff like that. But they've written a story around how it works. So you would think that that would apply through, but at the end of the day, if they give him a a blue one, then they're just going to say as blue, you know, it's just, that is what it is. We're off topic here. That's that's one thing about Canon. I think I, I hate it. The the mood ring lightsaber crystals. You want to just be able for somebody to just choose the color because they think the color is cool. It's a weapon. It always was a weapon, and they tried to make it the sentient thing. And James, I, I have two hundred dollars. I want a yellow one. Therefore, I am now. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he too would have a yellow one? That would be interesting. No, or a new I think color. he's having blue. I think he's I think he's blue, blue too because they've marked him with the blue from mm-hmm. Force Awakens. They're like, oh, you're getting that fin. But mm-hmm. what if, like, to differentiate? They don't want it to be like, oh, it looks the same as the Force Awakens. What if they show? They wanted to change it for that reason to say this is a different fin now or something. But you, you just got me thinking about something about the what yellow. What if he's just orange? Like, I mean, yeah, do whatever. I'm down for whatever. But orange I think it would be interesting if like they don't market it that he's a Jedi and they keep it like a secret. And then like the first scene in the movie, you see like a Jedi, a hooded Jedi, just like wrecking house with this gold lightsaber or whatever and then they take the hood off and it's finn and he throws ray her lightsaber back and he's like i like mine better and he takes his out and it's like green and we're like ah! <laughs> i i find i would if they're leaning into him being a jedi there's no way that's not marketed everywhere that john Probably. boyega yeah, is absolutely. the jedi yeah. yeah um yeah i don't know i have i have a lot of questions about when these movies would take place and how they do them like um, you know, I, I a hundred percent agree in the order thing, but like, I don't know the the Jedi had something established and people were happy to send their children off to become Jedi, you know, and now like it would be something different. So it would be hard to maybe find these people and you'd probably have to get them at older ages and all of them kind of are going against what Yoda was saying too old and John and Daisy and all them that, I don't know, like they're all. It, the the whole order of things is going to be a lot different. So, um, I don't know. I'm interested. I, in... I also like. I don't know if I'm just like. I don't want to say old school in that sense, but there was something special about Obi Wan being the Jedi and Luke being the Jedi, and then like in the prequels, they're like five billion Jedi in the arena, and it's just like I feel like it lost its. Um, 
luster a little bit. And I know that the Jedi obviously were this massive entity. So that makes sense, of course, it's George Lucas's story. But I don't know that I want to see, like, I don't know that I would want to see Rey leading an army of 500 Jedi. I, I almost want the Jedi to be a special thing again and minimize it a bit. Um just for the sake of the intimacy of Star Wars storytelling, um, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I do like the idea of the big lightsaber fights. And I remember when I heard about it and for Attack of the Clones, I was like, I can't wait to see that. Seeing Jedi just like running at like Braveheart. And they did it. They did the whole thing where they ran at the droids. But there's something like special about the mysterious wizard sort of thing. And they're the one that has the lightsaber. And I kind of miss that, the specialty element of it. And I would like to see that if I had to choose, I'd rather them explore that where it's like maybe these two are Jedi as opposed to think, like, we got all these kids and they're all Jedi now. Well, I, I think that's what I'm saying is like, I, I when I say there's going to be a council, I, I don't think that's in this episode 10 of this next movie that she's like started a council and there's all these Jedi and stuff. I'm saying that it's definitely going to be more intimate in the fact that there's only going to be like a few um, if not just the two of them. And by the end of that trilogy, that's when they really start kicking around the idea of starting something new and you're gathering people. But I, I very much think they're going to explore a that that thing that like Mandalorian does where there are no Jedi. There are no people who act like this. And then when one of them shows up, he owns the scene. Like he own like nobody is gonna take that guy out. Like, and I think that's that's what they could really lean into with these new stories is in a world where there are no Sith and there are no Jedi, there's uh Ray and Finn. They exist and they are the new heroes that show up to handle the situation because they're more. But powerful the bad than guy's obviously else. gonna be force sensitive. I would think the yeah. bad guy yes. yeah. really and Mm -hmm. that's why I think Finn's going to have a green lightsaber is because I think the first teaser we're going to get for this new movie is going to be a mysterious figure digging up those two blue lightsabers man mm -hmm. I, I don't know guys I I think I'm leaning towards the I like the villain I, I want to see the villain be someone that's not like I think that's the whole like Thrawn angle where like he was so smart even Tarkin like they become the villain because they, despite the fact that they don't have those abilities, their ability is mined and bigger and control and all this stuff and stuff. And that's happening in the High Republic right now with Marky and Roe. Like but he's Tarkin not force was never sensitive. The top villain though. He's a supporting and villain. you have to think movie wise, he they was. need someone for them to fight with lightsabers. And you can't have someone that doesn't isn't force sensitive fighting with a lightsaber. Makes it you less. Could. It doesn't even the playing field. Well, they just did it in Mandalorian. Like they had Ahsoka fighting someone who wasn't a wielding a lightsaber. I'm saying I think it's possible. I think they could yeah. do it. I think they could have someone who is really skilled and trained and they have some, maybe they also have a lightsaber, but it doesn't mean they're force sensitive. Like it, like how they are. In right. But right the now. only reason away, but. she was able to fight Ahsoka is because she had the Beskar spear. No, that I know. Battled a lightsaber. Then a new weapon so, that can villain. battle a lightsaber. I you know the what I mean? Though, is just like, have an Iron Man suit made of Beskar. And just be like, you can't touch yeah, me. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to have a villain. You know, Ray and Finn are gonna have to fight someone that the Resistance wronged. You know, the Resistance didn't help this planet and destroyed the planet. So the guy has the lone wrong. survivor of the Hosdian system. You know what I mean? He has like a bad grudge. She has a bad grudge. Like you ruined my planet. Like Rose, but it's like Kaz. A bad Rose. No, I'm I'm Kaz. fine. I'm fine Kaz with from all Resistance that. Resistance is the villain. <laughs> I'm fine with all that. I was just the 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 force sensitivity of it. Like I, I'm thinking like how Marvel villains always fight like they're opposite. You know what I mean? Like they have the same power, but the, right. The opposite. But here's but this the is thing. more like a a um civil war thing where it's like you have a character that doesn't have any powers. He just like somehow. But you're already getting to... that with the Mandalorian. So the saga films have been the films that have been very force heavy and force sensitive. And there's a character that's a Jedi fighting another force sensitive character. You have the Mandalorian that's not about that, really. You have all these other things and or all these other um, the Rogue Squadron movie. Who knows what Taika's movie's about? Mm -hmm. Like you have those stories. So if you're going to have a story with Rey, she has to be battling someone that's force sensitive and Finn. And Finn, obviously, we're talking about Finn too. 
we haven't had a story where force sensitive characters are going up against a non force sensitive person. Not in, not in live action. I'm saying you've ha- you have stories right now currently mm-hmm. in live action via the TV series and potentially the movies. We don't really mm-hmm. know yet where you have characters that aren't force sensitive going Solo against other story. non-force sensitive people. Right. I think that Ray and Finn have to be going against someone that's force sensitive to make it interesting. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to to switch it cuz then th- then they're not on the same playing field and that ups your villain. That's going to be the that's going to be the hardest challenge for them is is cuz you know, they were able to do the well this, you know, this kid's related to Anakin Skywalker and that's why he's, you know, so powerful and and they still did the black mask and the red lightsaber and all that. And they tried to make Kylo Ren unique and they did. And Adam Driver did a great job. But I think f- establishing a new villain for a new trilogy that's pure in terms of like, it's not someone's grandkid or something like mm-hmm. that. That's going to be a very, very tough challenge. It's for Maul whoever again. Does it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Maul's cousin. <laughs> it's Maul with Paul. another body. It's like full it's robot body Paul. now. Darth yeah. Paul. Um, he no, he, yeah, he just so, got prosthetics right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or or whatever they use for Kylo Ren's mask, they just filled him in with that. Oh yeah, there that, you go. Uh, it's more red, but now it glows. Yeah, everyone's yeah. like, "When are you gonna die?" He's like, "It's been me all along." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, holy uh, somehow Monty Miles Python the Holy Grail. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's gonna be the hardest part. Um, and whoever has to write that thing. Um, is going to have a lot of uh, a lot on there, a lot of pressure on them to to do it. But um, to I guess to to wrap us towards the end of this and segue into into the next thing. My last bit on this is I think um, they will certainly I think try to get more of a one team to tackle it sort of thing instead of the baton uh, method. And uh, I think I think that'd be good. And uh, I'm curious what they do, but. I, you know, just talking about it, and we're just pure, we're speculating literally on nothing. It has me excited, and uh, you know, because I think something like that will happen. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy that Boyega's already sort of turning the corner because maybe that means he shows up at celebration next year, and 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 that sort of thing. So, um, any final thoughts, guys, before we move into our uh, next segment? Uh, I love. John Boyega, and I can't wait to see him as a Jedi because I 100% think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think it's, I think it's very likely that it's going to happen. I just, I'm curious if it's not going to be for a long time. Like, <laughs> I think like 2028. Yeah, Maybe that's even. not a long time in my, in my head. That's you know they, they spit out another one and in like seven years or something, but. I'm curious if, like, the next time we see these people, they're like a, a lot of time has passed. Because, because mm. if they they spit it around in like seven years, that means when that trilogy is done in like ten years from now, that you know the, they should come back again, and then they could come back again, and then they could come back again. I, feel I mean, like they Daisy really Ridley's twenty nine right now. Yeah, no. So I'm so, saying I, I feel like it might almost need to be like 25 years or something before they bring those people back. They're not going to oh, bring Daisy Ridley not. back when she's 40-something. 55? Why not? <laughs> no, they're bringing her back probably in the next five years, I would say, when she's Ooh, like I think 35. I think that's too... I think like I say maybe 10 years. She'll be in her, like mid, her late 30s. But then you that's bring her back in the forties. Literally a year before forties. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's she's literally no, thirty nine. No, I'm saying. Oh, what I'm saying is like I think if you bring her back soon within the next decade, then she's young enough that you could still bring her back ten years from then. Then she's still young enough that you could bring her back ten years from then. So it's like the next six trilogies are are Ray stories. Like that's weird to me. They're either yeah. gonna have to break away from that, or they're gonna have to wait Watch, like, for a long time. Before before we put out this episode, Daisy Ridley's like, "I'm retiring from Star Wars." Yeah, forever, forever, <laughs> forever. Um, I'll take a right. bet right now that she's gonna be back by before she's 35. Uh, another bet. Mm-hmm. You said 39, so James says higher. This is like Price is Right. I, I think it's a silly thing to bet on. Like it's we're talking, you know, five or ten That's, years before yeah. this bet would resolve. 
And we yeah. just don't have enough information right now on what the plan is with Star Wars. Like it, that we hmm. really just don't know what they're doing. So yeah. Um. All right. Well. Uh. That's that for that discussion. But we have more to do. So uh, mm-hmm. we've got one hand more it off thing. to Lacey here. Yeah. All right, guys. We're doing. Is the Force with you? The Force will be with you. Always. So, Is the Force With You is our segment where we pitch a hypothetical situation and decide whether we buy or sell the idea by saying whether the Force is with us or not. I will read the scenario and we we will each answer whether the Force is with us or not and briefly explain why. So, the scenario is J.J. Abrams will direct another Star Wars movie. Is the Force With You, James? Oh, me first. Uh, no, I don't think he will. Um... I don't know. Do you, do you guys want to do, do you, you guys want to go around and say what we no, think give and your then answer. discuss it? Give my answer. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I, I think, I think he's done two star Wars movies and I think he's willing to, to let it be what it is. I, I and I have a, a feeling that the fans would have a hard time with him coming back, even as much as the people who do like him. I think it would be kind of that, that same thing where they're like, Hey, we're doing another star Wars movie. J.J. Abrams and everybody and everybody would be like, I mean, I like the, those movies, but I, I wish it was somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I just I don't know. I don't think I think J.J. said so much about him, like uh, uh, wanting to move into original stories and uh, not wanting to reboot things. And then uh, I don't know. I just I just don't think it. I don't think he would return. I don't think he's on that list. I think they wanted just to keep star wars exploring in different directions and stuff john is the force with you uh it's not with me i don't think he will direct another um unfortunately because i i love jj but um and i think he would be welcomed back if you know the those years pass and they bring it back because you'll have the crowd who says oh jj abrams can only start stories and be like well he guess what he's starting another one um, but then also there's the the time heals all wounds thing because I mean look at Boyagan just less than a year his wounds are healed but also like don't forget like Star Wars fans like destroy morally destroyed George Lucas's heart after the prequels to the point where he sold his franchise because he didn't want to deal with it anymore plus the world and, is ending right of course <laughs> which I watched that video Seth Rogen is a nut um <laughs> But so it, so it's it's kind of a bummer because I think that fans would come around and I honestly think you know we're in this like bubble where Star Wars fans on social media don't like JJ but I think most people were like those movies were really good <laughs> like the average Star Wars fan really liked all those movies so um I while I think he would be welcomed it's not with me because I don't think I agree with James I don't think he uh is interested in in, in revisiting but like we say you never know you never know. I uh, the force is not with me on this one. I don't mm. think JJ is coming back to direct. I think I could see him executive producing, maybe, or like having something on that end. But I could never see him direct it because of the conversations he's been having lately about like, oh yeah, I go back and I see what I could have done, and you start thinking about how things could have been different. And I think that even though he's not openly saying it's it's eating him up, I think with anybody, with any type of creative project, you look at it later and you're like, oh, I should have done this differently. And I think that with Star Wars being so in the spotlight with fans and in pop culture, I think he's just interested on in doing his own stuff now. Like he he's getting contracts with other studios and trying to do theme park stuff like he's on to new projects. I think he's always going to love his experience with Star Wars and I'm so thankful that he did do Star Wars, but I don't think he's going to direct it again just because of like a lot of the reasons you guys said. So yeah, that is it. Yeah. So we're going to go to John. Yeah. And the last thing before uh, we get out of here is I, I found it so interesting that people like took and it's it's really it's Collider's fault but that people took that interview JJ did with Collider it's like maybe don't do interviews with them anymore and just assume that JJ said we should have had a planned out story for the Star Wars trilogy he never said that mm-hmm. he you know and he all he said was he actually said both sides of things he's like yeah I understand 
the idea mm-hmm. of mapping things out. But sometimes you make one story and you're like, wow, that character turned out way better in collaborating with that actor than I thought. And we could try this po. now. They were going to kill Poe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I see his point of view on both sides of that coin. Um, there's there's pros and cons of both things. He he never said we should have planned out the sequel trilogy. And it's shame on everybody for for saying he did. And it just all it did was sick people on him saying, look, no kidding, no kidding. Well, guess what? No kidding. You didn't actually look into what the man said. So you're arguing against something that never happened. Uh, and here we are. So always chase those facts, folks. Always chase those facts. Um, all right. We are at the end of the show, as always. Before we do get out of here, we would be remiss if we didn't thank our generals on Patreon. And uh, that is Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, Micah Harrison, Jetta Rosewater, Michael Gaines, Kendall Gellner, Paul Olson, Jake Houchins, Jeff Connery, Oliver Lewis, Dave Hornack, Frank Grande, Ryan Wara, Hass Islam, Joe Ritchie, Darth Hurricane, Timothy Hill, John Charlton, and Val Trichkoff. Generals, thank you so much for all of your support. Hope you're enjoying uh, well all the new stuff coming on the Patreon page. And uh, we love you dearly. Um, we want to thank everybody for just being a part of the resistance and being part of TRB and listening and watching our show. Uh, make sure you do subscribe, your preferred podcast platform. Uh, wherever you get your podcast, we're probably there. If we're not, let us know. We'll get there. Uh, also, right here on YouTube, if you're watching, youtube.com slash Star Wars News Net videos. Make sure you do subscribe. And if you do watch our show, I know a lot of you love watching the video. Just do us a quick favor. Just like program your mind every time you go to watch our episode, like the episode. Because we get like, you know, a certain amount of views. If we could get one like for every view, it would change the game for us. So if you don't mind, it doesn't cost you anything except a second of your time, go bink. And sometimes it's fun. You see the little thumb go boop, turns blue, and you like our videos and we love it. So thank you. Uh, StarWarsNewsNet.com for all of your Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Uh, You could find me on Twitter, Johnny Hoey, StarWarsNewsNet.com, and my movie podcast, Just Like the Movies, with my best friend, Mike. Uh, Lacey, where are you at? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. James Bainey. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks and also Bad Batch uh, Reaction Show tomorrow morning. Bright and early. Um, when, what time you get up for that? Like three? three. Yeah. He's doing it for you people. All right. Enjoy your weekends. We will be back, of course, as always on Monday morning with another episode right here on TRB. See you around, kids.